Well, good evening and thank you for joining us this evening on the 3rd of July. Um, wanted to share something today, again, from um, the One Year Book of Hymns, uh, the devotional reading. Um, and I learned something new today. I, I had heard of and have read works by uh, G.K. Chesterton, uh, the, the British author and theologian. I had no idea he'd written a hymn. Uh, and the hymn is, O God of Earth and Altar. And so today's devotion that I'd like to share today is, is from that. Um, and it starts out with just a little bit of, of information about him. G.K. Chesterton, the noted British author and journalist, blended the realms of earth and altar. He was known for writing both detective stories and profound Christian apologetics, humorous essays on running after one's hat, and deep polemical works like orthodoxy, hilarious nonsense poems, and hymns for worship. He always kept a sense of humor about him, whether in writing his personal testimony, which he called My Elephant Elephantine Adventures in Pursuit of the Obvious, or in this hymn, where he asked God to tie in a living tether the prince and priest and thrall. Chesterton calls for unity between the political and the spiritual, reminding us that political freedom can only find its source in God. Only as the hearts of political leaders, religious leaders, and citizens are turned to him, can a nation, any nation, become aflame with faith and free. And the scripture uh, that is offered this, this evening is from Isaiah uh, chapter 59, which reads, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, or his ear dull, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue mutters wickedness. And he will come to Zion as redeemer, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, says the Lord. And the hymn, O God of earth and altar, reads as this. O God of earth and altar, bow down and hear our cry. Our earthly rulers falter, our people drift and die. The walls of gold entomb us, the swords of scorn divide. Take not thy thunder from us, but take away our pride. From all that terror teaches, from lies of tongue and pen, from all the easy speeches that comfort cruel men, from sale and profanation of honor and the sword, from sleep and from damnation, deliver us, good Lord. Tie in a living tether, the prince and priest and thrall. Bind all our lives together. Smite us and save us all. In ire and exultation, aflame with faith and free. Lift up a living nation, a single sword to thee. G.K. Chesterton, who lived from 1874 to 1936. You know, it's interesting because in the same vein, the devotional uh, from Reflections for Ragamuffins, uh, which was Brennan Manning's devotional, talks about the world's liberation. Uh, and it says this, I'd just like to offer up both as, as we think about this. And, and Brennan Manning writes this, the Christian growing in consciousness longs with Jesus for the unity of the global community. The dawning of the day when the lion shall lie down with the lamb East will learn the language of the West. Black and white will really communicate. Cities of apathy and garbage and despair will experience the sunshine of a better life, and all men will rejoice in the spirit that makes them one. The sense of cosmic oneness, his own freedom in the spirit, and the awareness that liberation and liberty are the nucleus of the message of Jesus, direct his attention and focus his energies on the emancipation of the world. The Christian cannot remain insensitive to the oppression of his brothers and oblivious to the world's struggle for redemption, freedom, and peace. He knows that the good done to the poor is done to Jesus himself. And I just want to offer a brief thought, and it just it's one that I think we're really aware of, probably on a deep level, that um, faith is not inseparable from politics because politics 
is one of those things that just simply describes the interaction between human beings on a cultural and societal level. I mean, there's, you can't escape that part of things. What we can avoid is being partisan. And, and the question that we wrestle with, or ought to, I believe, ought to focus our attention on, is, is simply asking, how does my faith in Jesus then work itself out as I, as a human being, relate to people around me and how we as human beings relate to each other? And one of the things I heard in G.K. Chesterton's um, reflection or in his hymn was the sense that um, the deepest transformation cannot be enforced, but uh, it, it occurs first uh, in the transformation of the individual heart and as that affects the cultures and the systems that we live in. Uh, for me, this sounds like the, the parable of the yeast uh, that uh, Jesus talked about in the kingdom of God. Uh, God's politics, it starts out invisible, and yet as the leaven of the kingdom uh, works, it transforms and has an effect in the, in the whole batch of dough. Uh, so, you know, we're going to disagree at times. We're going to have challenging discussions and arguments and all of that, and, and there's a degree to which that's healthy. Uh, in the midst of it, though, and in the midst of our own pain and, and fraught times and times when even just talking about these things can sometimes raise our shields or get us a little on edge, may we embrace that um, recognition and that humility of, I don't have it all together, uh, neither does my neighbor, my brother, or my sister, uh, but on that basis and on the basis of God who's calling us together into something deeper, uh, might we pursue that together, uh, seeking the good not only for myself, uh, but for those around me. Wherever you are on the journey, May that be part of our adventure and our calling, joining in the work of God, uh, drawing us together, not just in what we're aiming at, but in how we go about it. May God bless you and be with you on the journey. God's peace.